What's going on, Black and Fam? So here we are. CBR double R, the CBR one thousand double R rather. And um, yeah, it's time to wash her, man. It's been a long time since she has been cleaned. She's super filthy, and nasty. So we're gonna give her a nice wash. We've got the suds. We got the little hand clean thing. We're gonna hit that first. We need really to knock off a lot of the, the gunk. In fact, we need to just rinse her down. Let's do that. Let's get, let's get this. Sprints her down. A little bit of water. Alright y'all, alright let's hit with that soap, soap, start from the top and the front, work our way to the back. We really get a lot of these bugs and stuff off, so I want to do this video, because really you know everybody knows how to watch their bike. I'm doing this video because I want to tell you guys I appreciate you for supporting the content. Um, trying to get more consistent for you guys. Uh, one thing I do want to address, I saw it today. But those who don't know, I am overweight. <laughs> I know I'm overweight. I do need to lose the weight. Um, got a lot of life issues going on that I'm handling. I'm taking care of. And so... I don't necessarily work out like I need to, to decompress and get the stress off in a healthy way. And um, that contributes to me staying overweight. So if you hear me breathing hard, yeah, I'm a fat guy, but you're gonna get that content though. And I'm gonna be consistent with it now. Do I plan on just staying this size? Nope. Staying this size is no fun. You can't really tuck in when you're a big dude on a leader bike like that because designed for the svelte type dude, S V E L T E. Not the guy with the belly. So, here's what it is. Now, before you say, why don't you get a bigger bike? Uh, I want a new bike. I wanted a booster. They were talking about 400 a month for 80 months. Ain't no way. It's never that boy. It's never that crucial. <laughs> I like bike life, but damn. Not the point where I'm be broke. You know, living on my bike. Like, literally. And so I was like, yeah, nah, not doing that. Let's get this bottom front real quick. 
It tends to get real dirty. But yeah, man. I would say these last couple of years have been pretty great. I've had some near, you know, wrecks and stuff like that. Because I am a new rider. Uh, I try to ride smart and aggressive. Aggressively smart. I.e. Close enough to be, close enough to a vehicle where if I make a movement, they'll see me. You know, because I've already seen them. I see them, I'm close enough to them. When they make a move, I'm right there and I can make a move. And then they see me and say, oh, they may like crush this bike next to me. Excuse me. You know, that's how I try to ride because I don't want to be so far away from the vehicle. By the time they move over, I'm like, oh, shoot, it's too late. I can't really move. And then I get crushed or, uh, you know, knocked off my bike going cruising speeds. Or worse, they see me. I try to move over. I'm already over. Well, there's nowhere else to go except to the shoulder. It could be debris. It could be a drop off on the shoulder. It could be a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Oh, hold on. Damn it. One second. I got to get my little doohickey for the mosquitoes. Hold on one second. <laughs> I thought I had everything already out here. Nope. Bad for 99. Not bad at all. And I did. I got tired of this look. So I hit up Aquamarts. Use this code to save yourself some money. Look good for this night or the day. Two down. I right, went back. I get my doohickey. For the skeeters. Yep, there we go. Put it up here. Yeah, man. Create a little bubble. Keep them off my rear end. That's not what we want. The ambient Texas temperature is so crazy. Sorry, son, dry up over here. <laughs> Spray it down. Rinse it off. Get this backside real quick. So there's a. That was it. Yeah. 
Anyway, like I said, man, I, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate uh, the people I've ridden with. You know what I'm saying? People, people give advice. So I'm trying to give you guys real world experience from somebody who's new. So if you're new and you're thinking about a motorcycle, or you got somebody who love you love who's thinking about a motorcycle, you can have as informed of a point of view as possible. You know, I can't guarantee their experience will be exactly like mine. You know, that's impossible. It's uh, not impossible, highly improbable. But, you know, if you ride smart, take the time to learn your bike and ride your ride, man. That's the biggest thing, ride your ride. Too many people want to do what they see these guys on YouTube do. They go ham, go hard, man. I saw a fast like these last video where some of all the people who were passing away you know, riding bikes, and he was right. A lot of the crazy stuff or the stupid stuff, that's 10%, maybe 15% of what you'll do as a rider, man. Most of you pretty chill, just, just rolling, man, just enjoying the wind, cross your body, enjoying being flexible, you know, nimble, agile. Being able to take your vehicle where people in the cage can't go. You know, without burning in somebody. So, you know, take that into consideration. If you get into bikes for, you know, I'm a race. And I'm, man, just, just go to a track. Build your roll race bike, man. And take to a track. You know what I'm saying? Go to Texas 2K. Things of that nature. Get all the gear. Yes, it's super expensive. The gear is going to be expensive. A proper riding um, suit. It's going to run you some crazy bread. However, it's your, your body, your life you're talking about. You know? You got to protect it. And uh, that's not even guaranteed. So when you look at the world of motorcycles and you understand, like, hey, being on two wheels, it comes with the inherent risk of somebody around me not making a good decision. You approach riding two wheels differently. You know, I've had plenty of times people nearly pull over into me. I'm cruising, you know. They're not either, you know, they're not paying attention or if they are paying attention, they don't recognize, hey, that's a bike moving up on me. <clears throat> and a lot of people can't judge distance of speed, man, at all. Like, sheesh. They don't have no depth sense. And you're moving. You may be going 85 because, you know, you want to go over speed traffic, really. Because you want to be sitting in somebody's blind spot or, or their... On their side so long that they forget you're there. Just kind of blur into the background. And then they move over. Unexpectedly. And there you are. You know. Having to deal with. Whatever's over there. At one time when I was riding. I was looking. And I was grateful. They stopped. But I was. Mindful. Of the vehicle. And I was thinking like man. If he's not paying attention, I'm going to have to see where I'm going to swerve or lay the bike. Because sure enough, <coughs> excuse me again, where I was at and where they were at, they were in the turning lane on the opposite side of traffic. I was in the oncoming traffic, and if they would have turned in front of me, I'm not going to weave to the right and <laughs> hit them. I'm probably going to weed to the left. Problem. There's still traffic that I might not see. And then boom. I get hit. So now I'm left with a choice, you know. 
swerve, hope for the best, or lay the bike and hope for the best. That's the inherent danger of riding, man. And a shout out to Derry G. She, she said this, and I think she's a fairly new rider as well. Probably riding a little bit longer than me. But she says when she comes to intersections, she likes to, you know, uh, move side to side on her bike. So now you're not just a stationary object moving towards somebody. You go side to side, now people can, you know, you kind of wake up their vision and they see you better. That's something I, I've uh, come to adopt and try to do every time I come to an intersection, especially in, uh, well, particularly on the streets. Because why would you have an intersection on the highway? All right. Let's see. Swap out. Rinse off the soap. After we pour the soap on. All right. Rinse her off. Huh. <laughs> All they don't like, this is not filtered water. So, I'm about to dry it off for sure. They hit it with my mo tool. Cleaner. To get, keep the rain spots, the hard spots off of it. And, um, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's bike life. Beautiful. Also, please check out my re my first time ride and review videos. So you got the guy who is very new, so you get my perspective. So when I'm riding the bike, I'm riding the bike thinking of the of who the potential rider would be, like. Like, okay, if I got this bike for, you know, myself, would I get this, or should I say, would I get this bike for myself? And probably not, you know. Or if I did have a bike like this, or if I was, you know, still new, would I get a bike like this? Things of that nature. Like, super new, not, like, brand new, not two years new.
take some of these little green towels. Dang, I got some water on my day gum phone. Take one of these towels and cover it up. Get some of the water off. Should have covered it up the first time. And uh, let me give you guys some updates on what's going on with the channel. So we are working on the how-to video for the frame sliders, even though they've been on for quite some time. Just because um, I want to make sure you're not seeing no long, dull, boring parts of me, you know, turning the wrench, a ratchet, rather. <laughs> nah. Clipping it where it needs to be clipped, listening to it a little bit of time. So I'm working on it roughly two or three times a week. And taking it from the, like, hour-long video to something I would watch, you know. Trying to get it down to... Below 30 minutes, I think 30 minutes for a how-to video is, like, appropriate. If you got to do a part two, do a part two. Especially if you're doing, like, detailed work. Like, uh, I follow, uh, I subscribe to RRC Restorations. I like his channel. I like seeing stuff like that. I like seeing people, you know, take bikes or take anything and rebuild it. I like seeing, seeing stuff being built, because that's my mindset, that's how I am, I like to build stuff. I like to do it myself if I can. So I'm working on that. Um, by the time you see this video, you will have seen the Sunoco video. And yes, I know I call it, uh, not Sunoco, but Sunoco, in the video. So forgive me when you hear it. <laughs> but it is Sunoco. And um, cause gas, the right kind of gas and quality gas can make or break your riding experience, man. Uh, so I was riding, it's happened a few times. I was riding and it's happened again where I'm riding and I'm sputtering. And I'm thinking something wrong with my engine. Cause I'm, cru I'm at cruising speeds. I'm not speeding, I'm not accelerating. Cruising speeds hold between 6 and 8K RPMs. When you do 80 miles an hour, that's the worst, that's the last thing you want to feel. Period, man. Like, dang, it's like, nah, I ain't trying to die. I'm not trying to die. Not like that. What are you honking at? Don't be here, here. So... Looked it up. They're like, hey, it's water in your, your fuel. Basically, separation of the fuel. It's not a quality gas. And it's not really high enough octane for a bike like this. So, went to my local Sunoco, which they're not a lot in the DFW at all. And filled up with 93 Ultra. And yeah, check that video out. It's going to be two parts to that. Because I intend on, at the time of this video, bike night's supposed to be next night. I intend on going to bike night. But having filled up the rest of the tank with some more than 93 Ultra. Because um, when you're cruising, when you're on bike night, the last thing you want to feel is that makes you not want to do nothing. Because the, the first thought is like, if something happened to my bike, not only do I go down, there's people around me that might not have the skill set, reflexes, and they get hurt, you know? That's not what you want when you get a bike. You out trying to have fun, just, you know, a nice cruise with the, with the group. Last thing you want. So, if you got a bike and you run into that, more than likely, you got water. And you think so basically like the build up or not the build up but like the separation of the water from the gas and you're running and your bike sucks that up and it's like up oh. it's not combustible so it misfires and sputters worst case scenario now the bike I will say this bike is 
come and do for full oil change. I'm going to go with Motul. I like Motul's oil. My bike's had in CBR 600F4. And I'm going to do it in this bike as well. I'm going to do the oil change myself. And I'll probably shoot the content on it. So you guys can see what it looks like. If you ain't seen it before. If you want to come to my channel. So I'll supply it for you guys. You know. Yeah, man. Check out this moisture up. I'm going to have to get my car. Can of compressed air. You, yeah, it's beautiful work. Beautiful work. It's drawn off pretty quickly because I'm doing what I need to do. But we still want to hear some protectant from Motul. That way it's gonna last me a while. Yeah, we ain't worried about the water. Just place for it to drain out it, so we're good. Two places make sure they're not clogged up though. That's what you want to do. There's still a little bit of bug guts on here. Make sure we come to this one. Come to this one. Come to this one. So you guys can see it. When it comes over. Oh, this this one died? No, this is that. Bug guts. A little bit. If you wonder what I'm filming with, I'm filming with my Lenovo Mebo. Is Lenovo or uh, Logitech? It's the Mevo. It's the Mevo 3 camera set. So just in case I'm, I'm saying the wrong brand. That's what it is. You're a new ride, aren't you? Feel good? Ah, that's nice gear. And there's a guy next to you. Now, I know you feel away because you got your build jacket, you got your build helmet, your Sadiqi gloves. But that's so last generation. Like, what kind of boots are those, man? Who's riding that? You know what? I got something for you. Use my discount code, save yourself 15% and upgrade and look cool like the guy next to you. That guy, yeah.
I'm gonna get it off like this. Got the Motul E2 MC Care Moto Wash. It's biodegradable cleaner. So we're not hurting the environment. We use this. Still a little bit, still a little bit dirt, in certain areas. So guys, I've been thinking about painting my helmet the whitest white, right? And then take some stencils with the same star pattern that it's on my bike, and painting that after the helmet dries. Painting that the blackest black, Muso black, as a contrast with like red accents. Kind of match my helmet. Thought about doing that just to see if I could do it and see how cool it looked. See, I like this. Now, this is one thing you can do with the Mo tool. You can really get in here and get a good clean. These forks nice and clean. Yeah, man. So, for those who watch this video, watch it through and through, you know about it. Some of mine heavy. I think that'd be dope. Like, find the reddest red, the whitest white, and the blackest black, and do something hot with that. Like, mess people's head up, like, because I don't know how that would look. I'm curious. See if we got any more areas where it's super filthy McNasty. Yeah, I like this. So after you do your initial wash, you use this to do the touch-up areas where it's hard to really scrub and clean up. Like I'm about to use it on the wheels. I'm seeing what as the wheels are drying up, it looks still pretty dirty, but they're not caked up like they were. Previously, so we're able to get get this good and clean. Yeah, I like this. But for the wheels, I'm gonna do something different. Oh, and everything you see will be in my Amazon storefront. Like these uh, tearaway towels. 
These terrible towels. They're gonna be in storefront. Let me. I got you guys the weird angle over here now. I ain't think about that. An amiibo camera setup. That'll be in there as well. Wash and wax it. Now, what I wanted, but never got delivered, I ordered a graphene ceramic coating kit um, so I can do that on the bike. I was going to do a full deep clean, shoot the content, and um, Show it to you guys, see what the bike looked like, give you like a kind of before and after. It never got delivered, so I just canceled the order. Got my money back. Which is weird, because Amazon has been kind of hit and miss lately. I know I can't be the only one that sees it like that. You know? All right, let me show y'all how to look real quick. Let me get this one. Show y'all how to look real quick. This one switch over. No, this one. Let's see how shiny on one side and grimy on the other side. Nice. And that mo tool, this one is. Uh oh, knocking this over. This one is the what's it called? Motul MC Care E9. Also, uh, well, no, it doesn't say biodegradable, but it's a dry cleaner and protective wax. So it's a dry cleaner, so you don't need water. Wash and wax spray. Super dope. This will be. In the storefront for sure, because Motul does sell to Amazon, so you can get everything ordered from Amazon straight to your home. Pending Amazon isn't uh, off their game as far as deliveries. That's beautiful. Come on. But yeah, I, I was gonna do. Clean the bike, do that graphene ceramic coat, and see how well it holds up. Cause you know it's, it was saying on the box ten years, it was like a hundred bucks. I just want to see how well it hold up in this Texas heat. That heat beating on the bike when you're out riding, can it hold itself? You know, can it hold strong? It's gonna fade. But now we just use this for mo too. Motuli. And make it do what it do. But, um, 
I'm going to finish detailing the rest of the bike, man. And uh, what I will do is. Oh, that's so nice. That's so pretty. All right, guys. All right, guys, here's the bike. She is, make sure I got a good shot. All right, guys, she is done. Here she is, clean, shining like new money. Got a little, some chips and stuff on, you know, the front fender, but that's expected, you know. Got everything nice. So I wish I had that graphene coating. So I can really hit it, a little bit of water right here. That'd be all right, man. I ain't gonna let that. Too late, I couldn't see it. <laughs> Tires done. Chain clean and lubed. Yeah, man. I ain't worried about the exhaust that much at all. Because I'm putting the coat on, it's just gonna burn off and smell weird. But yeah, other than that, man. Now, this is aftermarket exhaust, which I'm thinking about a Yoshimura Shorty or M4 Carbon Shorty. Those are fairly bugs trying to sit on my bike. Get your ass on my bike. But yeah, man, she is clean. These mirrors, nice and clean. It is done. So, once again, I'd like to thank you guys for rocking with me, uh, enjoying the content. Uh, supporting the content I'm gonna keep trying to bring you guys stuff from my perspective a new bike new rider so you can you know for those of you who are new and you're thinking about it you can see um, it's not get on a bike and do 120 in on the track in, in New Mexico it's learning your bike really really taking time to make sure you know how to stop properly turn properly lean uh, overcoming these hurdles because you you know you're going at speeds and you're at the corner and you're leaning or you get a long long swoop and you're leaning the first thing you think is I'm gonna fall but you know centrifugal forces and stuff like that so taking the time to learn the bike and learn how to ride the bike properly and control the bike at low speeds will make it to where we can ride better at higher speeds always remember to ride safe and two down I'm gonna take a shower straight as hell <laughs> yeah. <laughs>